It's time, it's time, it's time for story time. Good morning, boys and girls. I'm Miss Paula, and I'm coming to you from South Royalton, Vermont, in our library. We can't be together right now, but we can share a book and a song over the computer. And today, we've got a book that I think you'll all like. Pumpkins. We're all seeing pumpkins everywhere at this time of year. Pumpkins. There's a part of a pumpkin. Here's another part, even closer. <clears throat> at that time of year, when the air has turned cool, the corn stalks have turned brown, and the leaves are falling, splashing their color on the ground. And the geese are flying. There they are, there's a V. They always fly in a V. And the geese are flying, and the crows are calling from the empty fields. It seems like there are pumpkins everywhere. But the story of the pumpkin begins in the springtime when the farmer plants her seeds in the ground. Now you can tell this is not fall. This looks like spring when it gets warm because she's wearing shorts. And she's got a long row there, and she's sprinkling the seeds in. The first small leaves of the pumpkins come up in 10 days or so. And in just a few weeks, the vines spread out and the flower buds begin to show. This is called a flower bud. You can see that yellow there. That's going to be a flower. Here's another one. And here's the very young leaves. That's before they get their flowers spread out. The buds open up. Here, a little bit bigger. There's the full flower, and that's what they look like on the ground. And the flowers up here. At the base of a flower, that means the bottom, the pumpkin begins to grow. It's green at first, but it soon changes color. What color do you see there? Orange. At the height of summer, full-size pumpkins are hidden among the vines. As the summer passes, the vines are cleared away, and pumpkins, pumpkins can be seen all over the ground. You can still see some of their vines here where they didn't get them all. And look what he has to use to get all those pumpkins. He's not picking them up by hand, is he? What is that thing called? I think it's called a fork lift. Pumpkins grow in many colors and shapes and sizes. The ones we know best are bright orange. There's some bright orange. But many kinds are yellow, where's yellow? There, tan, there's tan. Green, green, I guess that's green. And even blue, I think that's the blue one, but it might be this one, which looks more blue to you? I can't decide. And they are, let's see, around, most of them, and some are kind of flattened and squashed up, you might say. You can tell the squashed ones, they, but they, they didn't get squashed, that's the way they grew. Some are so small, they fit right in your hand. Others are huge. People have contests to see who can grow the biggest pumpkins. The gigantic pumpkin on the forklift there's the man inside. Weighs over a thousand pounds. You think you could lift that? Absolutely not. It takes a big machine to lift it. 
Many farms will let you go out in their fields to pick your own pumpkin right off the vine. He's got a lot to choose from. I don't know which one he'll choose, but look how big some of them are. For Halloween, a lot of people carve their pumpkin into a jack-o'-lantern. You'll need a pen or a marker that erases easily. Draw a face. You can make it happy or you can make it scary, whatever you like. Then get an adult to cut all around the top with a saw or not. When I say adult, I mean your mother, your father, grandmother, grandfather. Do not ever try to carve a pumpkin with a knife. In fact, don't even go around a knife. They can be very dangerous. Remove the top of the pumpkin, and with your hands as a scoop, you can scoop out the guts. That's what they're called, the guts, and the seeds, and the wet membrane in between the seeds. Then get an adult to cut out the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. Happy or sad? Sad. Once the jack-o'-lantern is carved, put it out on your steps at night or in your window or get some other safe place. Put a candle inside and light it and it will look quite nice. And I think you can also get little flashlight things that some people put in and then you don't have to worry about fire because of a flame. By November, the pumpkins are mostly gone. They're picked for jack-o'-lanterns or pumpkin pie. The few that are left will die on the vine, eaten by animals, or they just are left to rot. This is what a pumpkin looks like when it rots. Everything gets all kind of ugly. But you see what these are? Pumpkin seeds. And the seeds, if they're left on the ground, will make pumpkins for next year. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's a good book. It's a good book. And I've got a song to go with it. Oh, I know. So we can all sing it. Jack-o'-lantern, jack-o'-lantern, you are such a funny sight. As you gaze out the window, looking out at the night. Well, I hope, I hope, that you get to do something with the jack-o'-lantern or make your own. If you don't, you can buy pretend ones and they're just as good too. Well, our story time is over for this time. Next time, we'll be talking about Halloween. It's time, it's time, it's time to say goodbye. Come back next week.